first of all, I uh, want to uh, thank Gita Brut for inviting me. I consider it uh, an honor and a schus, and especially my good friend Rabbi uh, who is in charge over here, uh, makes it even uh, a greater honor and a greater schus. You know, many times uh, we spend time speaking about the various Yomim Tovim uh, throughout the year, and we forget the foundation of all the Yomim Tovim, which is Shabbos. So I thought that, uh, especially in the months of Cheshvan, where there are no Yomim Tovim to talk about, and also, as Rabbi Liebman said, uh, this coming week is the Shabbos project all over the world, so it would be a good idea to speak about what Shabbos is all about. What are you supposed to learn in general? What's the message that Shabbos is supposed to convey? And obviously in a half an hour, we are not going to be able to cover this in great, great detail. But I hope I'll be able to give over to you the basics. And ten lechachem v'yechkem old, if I give you the basics, you'll be able to elaborate on it, each one according to their uh, abilities. Shabbos is mentioned quite a few times in the Torah, but predominantly it was given as one of the Aseris Adibros, what's commonly known as the Ten Commandments. And um, the Ten Commandments are mentioned twice in the Torah. Once in Parshas Yisro, when it was actually given, and once in Parshas Vo'eschanan, where Moshe Rabbeinu reviewed it. The first time the Torah tells us Zohar is Yom HaShabbos, remember the Shabbos to sanctify it. And the second time Moshe Rabbeinu changes it and says Shomer is Yom HaShabbos, observe the Shabbos. So the rabbis point out Zohar v'Shomer b'dibor echod nemru, that these two things, Zohar is Yom HaShabbos and Shomer is Yom HaShabbos were said at one time. They were said in one breath. And uh, they're both true, and the Torah said it one time uh, in one place and a different way in the other place, but the truth is they were given at the same time, both of them together. There's a medrash that comments on this idea of Zohar v'shomor b'dibor echod, that Zohar and Shomor were said at one time, that there were other things that also were said at one time. And it gives a whole long list. I'll give you two examples so you'll see the problem. It says that the prohibition of shatnes, wearing clothing that has wool and linen in it together, was said at the same time as the mitzvah of tzitzis, where if you have a linen baguette, you put on wool and tzitzis on that baguette, because the treles, the blue dyed part of the tzitzis, has to be wool. So the same Torah that said you can't wear wool and linen here said it's a mitzvah to do it. Another example, the Torah says that you can't marry, a man can't marry his sister-in-law, his brother's wife. But if the brother dies without children, there's a mitzvah of yibum for the man to marry his sister-in-law. The same Torah that said that it's prohibited in this situation said it's a mitzvah in this situation. It would seem to imply that there is some kind of contradiction between Zohar and Shamar. And yet, they were said together, there's no contradiction. The same Torah that said, remember the Shabbos, said, observe the Shabbos. Now, on the surface, it doesn't really make sense because there doesn't seem to be any contradiction between remembering the Shabbos, which is basically the idea of the positive mitzvahs of Shabbos, Kiddush, and enjoying the Shabbos, and Shomer Shema Shabbos, which is a negative aspect of Shabbos, not doing malacha not doing those uh, creative acts which the Torah prohibited. There doesn't seem to be any contradiction over here that the Torah had to say them together as it did by these other things where there's a seeming contradiction and yet they were said together. There's no contradiction at all. Same Torah said both of them. In order to understand this medrash and to understand Shabbos properly, the first tell you what many of the commentaries say. Rabbi Shamshun Farl Hirsch uh, sums it up very nicely. One of the messages of Shabbos, why we are prohibited from doing various creative acts on Shabbos, and those acts are the things that went into building the Mishkan, 
and building the Mishkan is our way of creating a world because the Mishkan was a mini world, was a mini universe. It even had the, the brass hooks in the top, looked like a planetarium with the stars in the sky. And every aspect of the Mishkan corresponded to something else in the world. So man's idea of building a world is building the Mishkan. And we're not allowed to do that on Shabbos. We can't build worlds on Shabbos. Why not? Says of Shamshon Fal Hirsch, because man was given tremendous latitude, tremendous power in this world. We have the power to create and the power to destroy. We have life and death in our hands. And six days we do all of those things and we begin to think that we're the Balabatim over here, that we run the world. We can do anything. Years ago, this is before they even discovered AIDS, I saw a doctor in Miami made the following uh, insane statement. He said, given enough money and enough time with the emphasis on the money, there is no disease that modern medicine can't conquer. They don't even know about some diseases. It's a very uh, pompous statement. That means that we can control everything. We can control nature. We can control everything. And we are the creators and we are the destroyers of the world. And we begin to think that we're the Balabatim. We make the rules. We can do whatever we want. Similar to a, um, uh, a person who owned a factory and um, he didn't want to work so hard. He didn't want to. He just wanted to get his profits. So he appointed a manager to take care of the factory. He gave him total latitude. He could fi hire, fire, make the schedule, whatever he wanted. Just every month he should send him, uh, should send him the, um, the profits uh, from the factory. And this person did this for a few years. And one day he said, you know, I'm getting older. Why do I have to work so hard? You know, if I sell the factory, I could live off the profits for the rest of my life. So he put an ad in the newspaper selling the factory. The owner of the factory sees this ad, calls up the guy, says, what are you doing? It's my factory. Why are you selling my factory? He said, obviously, you got so used to doing everything that you could do on your own that you think you own the factory. So I'm going to make the factory off limits one day a week. You can't come in either. It's locked. You can't use the machinery. You can't, you can't use this factory at all. And you'll remember one day a week that you're not the boss over here, that you're only a hired manager. So too, Shabbos teaches us we're not the boss over here. We have to fit into the framework that the Rabban Hashem created. And that is one of the main reasons why we have to keep the Torah. Not necessarily because God is stronger than us, could zap us with a lightning bolt if he wants to, and therefore we better do what he wants. But it's much more uh, basic than that. When you buy a car, it comes with an owner's manual. The owner's manual tells you what kind of gas to put in the gas tank and what kind of oil to put in the crankcase and what kind of detergent to use on the, on the upholstery. Now, when you buy the car, you spend a lot of money, and it's your car. Who is the manufacturer to tell you what to do with your car? You can put anything in the gas tank you want. It's your car. Now, the answer is you didn't design the car. The car was designed by the, by the company that made the car, and they designed it to run on gasoline. So you can put water in the gas tank, but it's not going to go anywhere because it wasn't designed to run on water. So you are bound to the design of the designer if you want the car to function properly. Same thing. If we understand that God created us and he designed us, then he not only has a right, but we are bound by his design. He can tell us what to eat and what not to eat, what he created us, how he fashioned us, what we should eat, what we should wear, what we should think, what we should say. And you can do whatever you want, but you may be burning out your motor if you don't fit the design of the designer. So that is the first lesson of Shabbos. You are not the balabos. You have to fit into a framework that God, who created the world, made. And in order to fit into that framework, you can't do whatever you want. You have tremendous latitude here, but it's within a framework that God created. And therefore, Shabbos reminds us we are not the boss. We are merely created beings that happen to live in this world. There's another lesson of Shabbos, though. Shabbos is me'ein olam haba, it's like the world to come. And it teaches us that we are the ones who create that world to come. We are partners with God in creation. 
The Gemara relates that Tunis Rufus Harosha, the Roman Caesar, once asked Rabbi Akiva, what's better, what people make or what God makes? He expected Rabbi Akiva to answer, of course, what God makes is better than what people make. And then he was going to attack and say, if that's the case, then we Goyim, who are uncircumcised like God made us, are better than you Jews who are circumcised like a Moel made you. Rabbi Akiva surprised him, and he said, what people make is for sure better than what God makes. So Tunis Rufus says, how could you say that? He said, very simple. You're going home to eat lunch. God made wheat. Your wife made cake, bread, which is better. The cake and the bread is for sure better than the wheat. So you see, what people make is better than what God makes. What was the intention? God made an imperfect, raw material world, and he wants us to perfect it. That's what it says, Asher Bara Elohim, La asos. God created a world la asos, that man should perfect it. So we are here to perfect God's world and to build towards the world to come. So we basically finish off the creation. We're partners with God in creation. The um, being partners with God in creation seems to be in contradiction to that first lesson that we said. That man is just a simple worker over here. He's not the boss, and don't get carried away with yourself and realize that you're not the bala boss. And here we're telling you man is a partner with God in creation, and he finishes off and perfects the world. And that's one of the reasons why we don't work on Shabbos, for a different reason than to remind us that we're not the owners of this factory and it's off limits, just the opposite. Sometimes you get involved in working or whatever, and you begin to think the whole purpose of work is to make some money. And that cheapens the whole idea of creative activity in this world. You know what work is? Which work we're not allowed to do on Shabbos? The 39 things that went into building the Mishkan. We have the ability to build the Mishkan and bring God's presence into this world. That's what we can do. So by taking a step back one day and not working, we appreciate what work can do. We appreciate how, how powerful we are, what we can accomplish. So Shabbos, on the one hand, tells me I'm a nobody. Don't think you're the boss over here. At the same time, it tells me you're a partner with God in creation. On the surface, they seem to be contradictory. Comes along the Torah and says, no, Zohar v'shamar b'dibur echad. They were said at the same time. The shamar, the negative aspect of Shabbos, and the positive aspect are not contradictory, meaning the following. If you understand that you have to fit into God's framework, within that framework, you're a partner with God in creation. If you think you're the bala boss, you think you're the boss, you're nobody. But in the framework that God created, you're very important. That is the message of Shabbos. With that, we can understand a few different things. First of all, the Gemara says that if somebody is lost in the desert and they have amnesia, and they don't know what day of the week it is, and I had that experience recently when uh, after being two and a half days in a coma, I woke up and had no idea where I was and what day it was. One of my sons wanted to, uh, he's a practical joker, wanted to tell me that it was, uh, uh, what's it called, Tuf Shin Pei Zion, and my youngest grandson was a chassan or whatever, but he didn't do that. But they told me it was Tuesday morning. I had no idea. Right? I didn't know anything from Friday night till Tuesday. So it's possible not to know where you are, what you are, whatever. You're in the desert, and you all of a sudden wake up and realize you don't know what day of the week it is. So there are two opinions what you do. One opinion is that the day that you know you don't know what day it is, you consider that Friday, and immediately that night you make Shabbos. You don't know if it's really Shabbos, but at least, at least you have a Shabbos. And then you count six days and make another Shabbos. And you keep this up until you find out when Shabbos really is. The other opinion says, no, the day that you realize you don't know what day it is, you make that Sunday. And you count six days and you make a Shabbos after that. The Gemara explains what is the argument. It depends from whose perspective you're looking at it. If you look from God's perspective, God created the world in six days and Shabbos was the seventh day. So here, same thing over here. You make Sunday the first day and then Shabbos the seventh day. But if you look at it from man's perspective, man was created on Friday. The first full day he had was Shabbos. So from man's perspective, Shabbos precedes the week. From God's perspective, Shabbos ends the week. And we find that um, uh, illustrated in many ways. 
that Shabbos can be the beginning of the week or the end of the week. How so? We have many customs where the Shabbos before an event is, is, is significant. Shabbos before Yom Kippur is Shabbos Shuvah. Shabbos before Pesach is Shabbos Agadol. The Shabbos before a wedding is an Ufrah. Shabbos before a bris is a Shalom Zacher. The Shabbos before the week, before the week precedes what's going to happen during the week. Because Shabbos is Mekor HaBracha. Shabbos is the source of all blessing. Shabbos is the source of the coming week. And therefore, whatever's going to happen during the week, its energy source comes from the Shabbos before so we already begin to celebrate that event, the Shabbos before, because the energy of that event comes in the Shabbos. On the other hand, we know Shabbos is the weekend. It's the culmination of the week. So from God's standpoint, God wants us to understand that we are um, partners with him in creation, and we create the world to come, and Shabbos is like six days is the 6,000 years of this world, and the seventh day is Olam Haba. That's how God looks at it. But man has to look at it that before he can do anything in this world, he has to have a Shabbos and know he's not the boss, that he has to fit into God's framework. So from man's uh, standpoint, he has to keep Shabbos before he involves himself in the world. From God's standpoint, Shabbos is the crown of this world, which we help to create by what we do in this world and create the world to come. It's another thing that we can understand from this. Shabbos sometimes is referred to as masculine, and sometimes it's feminine. In our davening, we reflect that. Friday night, we say, v'yonuchu va, referring to the Shabbos as feminine. Shabbos, Friday night, is a malka, kala, bowi chala. Shabbos, daytime, is referred to as masculine, bo, and mincha time, we put them together, bum. The fem- masculine, feminine together. Because the idea, I think, is, is the following. Masculine always represents the one that is the giver, right? And the feminine is the receiver. It doesn't mean all women receive and all men give. It has nothing to do with men and women. It has to do with plumbing. It has to do with electricity. The world was created in such a way that there are mekablim and nosnim, right? The, um, it happens to be one is referred to as zohar and one's referred to as nekeva. Shabbos sometimes receives from us. We make the Shabbos. V'shom ruvene Yisrael es ha-Shabbos, la-asos es ha-Shabbos. When it comes to observing the Shabbos, we make the Shabbos. How so? The observance of the Shabbos refers to the negative lesson. You're not the boss here. How do you show that you believe you're not the boss? By not doing malach on Shabbos. When the phone rings and you don't answer it, it shows that you believe that that's not your phone. And it's not even Bezik's phone or whatever else. It's God's phone. And if he says you can't answer it, you can't answer it. By not doing malacha, we are making a statement. I am not the boss. This is not my world. And if God says it's off limits, it's off limits. But if you don't keep Shabbos, you ignore it, then the Shabbos is irrelevant. We make the Shabbos relevant by observing it. And if you don't observe it, then it's, the lesson is lost. The lesson is our observance, not the intrinsic idea of Shabbos. So we make the Shabbos. So we are the giver, and Shabbos receives. Shabbos, from the Shomer aspect, is is feminine. On the other hand, the Shabbos that tells us that we are partners in creation with God, and we create the world to come, has nothing to do with what we do. Even if we ignore that, but the fact is that we are partners in creation with God. We don't have to do anything that God says, you're my partner, and I want you to create the world to come. Whether we do it or not, that's the fact. So when it comes to the zohar, the remembering aspect of Shabbos, the positive lesson, that is intrinsic to Shabbos, and that gives us, it makes us important. We're the receivers. Shabbos is the giver. Shabbos is masculine. In fact, the word zohar, to remember, is also masculine. So Shabbos, from the uh, aspect of zohar, of remembering the Shabbos, remembering that we are partners in creation, the Shabbos makes us important. It gives to us. From the observance of Shabbos, the lesson that we are not the Balabatim here. We are not the boss, but we are created beings who have to fit into God's uh, um, framework. That is only significant if we keep it. If we don't keep it and ignore it, then the lesson is lost. 
So we give the Shabbos meaning, we give the Shabbos relevance, and therefore Shabbos is the receiver and we are the giver. But since both of these lessons, like we said, have to go together, if you think you're the boss, you're nobody. But if you understand you have to fit into God's framework, in that framework, you're a very important person. You're God's partner. Shamra v'zachar b'diborecha, so mincha time, we put them together and we say v'yanuchu vam in the plural. Both the masculine and feminine go together. They're not, not contradictory, which answers another question. Lecha Dodi was written by Rav Shlomo al -Kabitz. Now in the Torah, the first mention of Shabbos in the first Ten Commandments is Zohar Yom HaShabbos. In Vueschana, when Moshe reviews it, he says Shomer. So Zohar comes before Shomer. Yet in Lecha Dodi, the first verse is Shomer v'Zohar b'dibur echad. Why did he change the order? Why did he put Shomer before Zohar? He should have said Zohar v'Shomer b'dibur echad. So one simple answer is because he wanted to put his name in the beginning of the stanzas. And if he would have started Zohar v'Shomer, it would have been Zlomo and not Shlomo. So in order to be Shlomo, he had to put Shomer v'Zohar. But that's not really an answer, because even I could figure out a way to keep the order and still get his name in there. How? Shabbos. Zohar v'Shomer b'Dibur Echad. So you start with Shabbos, and that's a shin. And it could figure, it could, it could fetch it into the, into the rhyme and the pattern there also. There's many chazonim fetch a lot of things into a rhyme and a pattern. Okay, so another word wouldn't make a big difference. Why did he say like that? Because the way that things work, first you have to know you're not the boss. That's Friday night. Once you know you're not the boss and you have to fit into God's framework, now you know within that framework you're very special. That's Shabbos morning. So in practice, the Shomer has to come before the Zohar, and it does. Friday night is this lesson, Shabbos morning is the other lesson. So why does the Torah say it the opposite? Why the Torah say Zohar and then Shomer? Because the Torah always speaks about the goal first. The goal really is that you should know you're a partner in creation. But in order to get to that goal, you need first to know that you're not the boss. So the Torah put the goal, Zohar. And then it said the means is the Shomer. But when you actually do it, first you do the means and then you get to the goal. So Friday night is Shomer and Shabbos morning is Zohar. The chronological order is Shomer and Zohar, even though the ideal, ideological order is Zohar as the goal and Shomer as the means to reach that goal. All this said, I think that that's a deeper meaning in what Chazal say, Il mole shomru Yisrael shnei Shabbosos. If the Jewish people would have just kept two Shabbosos, Mashiach would have come. So mostly we're the first two Shabbosos, any two Shabbosos. But I think it means something else. The Tosfi, we say in davening on Musaf, Korban Musaf Shabbos Koro'ui, the befitting sacrifice of Musaf Shabbos. Says Tosfi, why is it befitting? Because it's Shnei Kvasim, two Kvasim, because everything about Shabbos is double. We have double bread, and we have this double lesson of Zohar V'Shomer, and a double sacrifice. Everything about Shabbos is double, meaning both of these lessons. The lesson you're not the boss, the lesson that even though you're not the boss, in the boss's framework, you're very important. You're his partner. So if we just kept both aspects of Shabbos, the two Shabbosos, the Shabbos of knowing our place, but at the same time knowing our place is very, very important, then Mashiach would come. Okay, any questions? Yes? Giving, I got a little confused about the part um, where you said that we make Shabbos relevant. Right. If, I was, if, if I ignore the Shabbos, right, and I do malacha, so the Shabbos itself doesn't represent the fact that God is the boss here and I'm not. And I am doing nothing to, to um, promote that. If I keep the Shabbos, I'm making a statement. I'm not the boss here. If the boss says the, the world is off limits, it's off limits. So by keeping the Shabbos, I am making the Shabbos relevant because my observance of the Shabbos makes it relevant. If I ignore the Shabbos, it's not relevant. On the other hand, the other lesson, 
where Shabbos tells me that you are the partner with God in creation. You create the world to come. Shabbos is like the world to come. That's a fact to itself. Whether I keep the Shabbos or not, that's a fact. Right? So therefore, from the, the standpoint of the Olam Haba Shabbos, the Shabbos gives to me. It makes me important. From the aspect of you're not the boss here, I have to make the Shabbos relevant by observing it, otherwise it becomes irrelevant. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, all you have to do now is think about this and add all the different things that you want to, and, uh, but it gives you a pretty much basic idea of what you're supposed to think about on Shabbos, these two ideas, and everything else that happens on Shabbos can be understood in light of these two Shomer Vezocher concepts.